my literary luminaries, and welcome back to another Top 5 Thursday. Except it's not Top 5 Thursday, as you will probably see in the title of this video. Because the problem is this. This week's Top 5 Thursday is your Top 5 Did Not Finish Books. I only have one. Like, there is only one book that I have ever properly DNF'd. And that's Great Expectations. I did it in school. My entire class revolted against it, and eventually the teacher stopped trying to teach it. That was an adventure. But the problem is that's really the only DNF book I have, so I can't do the Top 5 Thursday. Thus, you are getting the social media tag. Woo! I will link both the original video and the questions that I got from Ariel Bissett down in the uh, description. And of course, all the questions. So if you would like to do this tag as well, you can do it. So number one is Twitter, your favorite shortest book. And mine is also uh, my smallest book, probably in terms of size. But I have a copy of How the Leopard Got His Spots by Rudyard Kipling. Um, it's only about yay big. <clears throat> it's a very small book. But it's one that I've had since I was a child. I read it a lot back then. I haven't read it in a long time, but I remember loving it, and I love the stories. I love his writing. And it, I like the sort of fable-esque element to it. Number two is Facebook, a book that everyone pressured you into reading. And I don't necessarily know about everyone, but the book that I remember getting the most pressure to read was The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. My friend Denise, who is a fellow booktuber and is awesome and you should watch her stuff, was a huge fan of this book. And she was really the one that I remember most distinctly being like, what do you mean you haven't read it yet? Have you read Tiffios yet? Have you read it? Have you already read it? And I'm like, no, Denise, I haven't read it yet. But I, I found a copy for really cheap in a store somewhere. And so I just put it on my shelf. I didn't think about it. And when... Uh, announcements for the movie started coming out. I was like, well, all right, I do kind of want to see the movie. The movie looks interesting. So maybe I should read the book. And so I did. And I brought it with me places because, you know, ever since I was a very young child, I would bring books with me everywhere. Not a bad habit, honestly. And I was at like, I wasn't feeling well. And so I was at like a group event with some of my friends, but I was feeling like crap. And so I was just like sitting on a couch somewhere. I just wanted to be around everybody, but I had the book with me and I was near the end. You don't want to be near people <laughs> at the end of that book. Uh, so that was an interesting uh, dilemma to explain to people why I was just curled up on the couch crying. Um, but I'm glad that everyone pressured me into it. It was an excellent book. I really, really enjoyed it. I did actually do the, um, what do they call it? Night Before Our Stars? The big thing with like the actors and everything in the theaters. I did that and that was, that was enjoyable. But, <clears throat> so sometimes peer pressure can be good. Most of the time it's not, but sometimes. Next one is Tumblr, which is a book you read before it was cool. So your favorite hipster book, I suppose. And I chose Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. Because I, I read this, I think, around when it came out. And the problem was this book became cool very quickly. Or at least it became cool in waves. And so when it first came out, everyone really liked it. And I read it. And it was an enjoyable book. And then it sort of petered out for a while. And then the movie came. And then everybody liked it. And I did have a moment where I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I read that book a while ago now. My, my very small little hipster moment there. But I suppose that's, that's really the one that I read before it was cool. Next is MySpace, a book you don't remember whether you liked it or not. I chose Pawn of Prophecy by David Eddings. Because this has been on my bookshelf for a while now. And not only do I not remember if I liked it or not, I'm not entirely sure if I finished it. I know once upon a time I started reading it. But I have no idea if I finished it or if I liked it or what was going on. Because if I liked it, I'd like to pick up the rest of the Belgariad and like read all that jazz. But I don't remember... 
I assume if I've kept it through this many moves, I probably liked it, but... So I guess I'll have to read it, possibly again, and figure out if I liked it or not. Yay. Next is Instagram, a book that was so beautiful you had to Instagram it. As anyone who follows me on Instagram knows, I don't use it much. But, so I chose one that... It, it's a very boring book to look at. In fact, I will go get it and show you. So hold on one moment. Alright, so I am back. And the book that I chose for this one is A Treasury of Great Science Fiction. Which is... Boring. But... The reason that I chose this was because I have been looking for this book for probably close to a decade. It's got a short story in it. It's a whole bunch of like science fiction short stories. And it's got one in it called, whoa, hitting microphone. The Widget, the Wadget, and Boff. And this is a story that my whole family has quoted bits and pieces of for my entire life and my dad got a copy of this book through like a science fiction book club way back in the day and so he was like i don't know where you'd find a copy of this i have no idea and so i just sort of gave up for the most part and was like well maybe you know i'll inherit the book eventually and i suppose that's when i'll get my copy of it but i went to a used bookstore in pittsburgh that let us wander around their back room because it, where all the books like they hadn't sorted yet were and they're like you know be careful everything is super unsteady but you know you can look around if you'd like and so I was like oh yeah sure why not I was there with a bunch of my grad school friends so it's a whole bunch of you know writing people wandering around a bookstore we're more than happy to swim through piles of books and I found it like in the middle of this pile in this back room and it was the happiest moment of my life. I just walked out and went, please tell me you're selling this. Please tell me I can buy this. And they're like, yeah, no, it's fine. You can buy it. I'm like, okay, good. Tell me how much money you want. I'll pay it. Alternately, um, one that I could probably put here that I don't have a copy of but will soon is um, The Ghost of Opalina or Nine Lives by Peggy Bacon, which ironically in its hardback form kind of looks like this book. But it's another one that has been out of print for years and years and years and years. And like my local library back when I was growing up had a copy and my best friend and I loved reading it and then it vanished. And because it's out of print, it cost hundreds of dollars to get a copy. And I was like, well, never owning that book, sad. And if any of you watched my Twitter probably a couple of weeks ago now, I found out that it came back in print, and my mother did at the exact same time, which was really weird, and we both ended up ordering a copy, so I had to like cancel out my copy, and it was ridiculous, but I'm so excited to finally be able to own a copy of that book and read it again and enjoy it, um, but that's probably another one. That might actually end up on Instagram, so hey, you keep watch or something. Next is YouTube, a book you wish would be turned into a movie. This one is easy. Chronicles of Amber by David Zelazny. As much as I would love to see The Dragon Riders of Pern as well by Anne McCaffrey, I think it would make a really excellent movie. I think we have the technology to do it now. I really want to see Amber. There's so much cool stuff in Amber, especially since I saw an article somewhere that scientists have theorized that the concept in Amber of shadow worlds, like an infinite level of realities, might actually be true. I want it so badly. It's so beautiful. I want. The trouble is very few people, especially people my age, have actually ever heard of Amber or read it or anything. So I have to be my little fan boy all on my own. And finally is Goodreads, a book that you recommend to everyone. And I've probably recommended it to you guys several times, but that is always Male of the Species by Alex Mint, who is a brilliant man and a fantastic speaker and a wonderful writer. And Male of the Species is a great collection of short stories that look at men in different cultures and how they perceive their masculinity, masculinity and how they express it and how it affects the way they live their life. 
and all of that sort of jazz. And it's wonderful and it's glorious. And I think Alex Mint is phenomenal in everything he touches. And so I recommend this to people because, again, it's something that a lot of people may not have heard of. So I'm more than happy to pass on the glory that is Alex Mint. But those are my choices for the social media tag. Um, as always, you know, check out the original video, check out Ariel's video. Um, let me know what yours would be. Make your own video. I would love to see them. And if you do, leave me a link down in the bottom and I'll go watch it. But until next time, with any luck at all, I do believe, yes, checking my little note card here, next week we will be back to Top 5 Thursday. But until next time, I will see you all again on Tuesday for another Tuesday Talks. Bye! Literary luminaries and welcome back to another talk. Hello, my literary luminaries, and welcome back to another another god. At least it, it sort of behave. It, 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 it,